welcome back to the Top Left uh, Podcast, where we talk about uh, agile, lean topics um, for the benefit of MSPs around the world. So sometimes we get operational, sometimes it's more leadership, we bring in different clients, um, partners, coaches, other trainers, and bring good value to our clients. And so i um, excited to have Chris, who's my partner and president at Crafty Penguins back. We just did an episode on capacity planning, so watch that if you haven't. And today we're going to talk about time entry. So welcome back, Chris. Thanks. Thanks, Ben. Nice to be here. Yeah. So let's just, yeah, um, just recap Crafty Penguins. How long has it been around? Um, what's the team size and that sort of thing? Yeah. Okay. So um, the, the Crafty Penguins team, the Crafty Penguins business um, started as a fledgling little penguin uh, with you. Because for those of you that don't know, Wim has has been on the dark side for a while. Uh, his his uh, passion has also been with Linux uh, for a very long time. Um, so Linux was in the in the blood and in the making of this company from the from the very start. Uh, it's been around for is it fourteen years now? I think mm, is the number. Seventeen. I think it's uh, two thousand seven. February I started with. Oh wow! Okay, yeah. So sixteen yeah. years. So um, it's been around basically since the beginning, and uh, it's grown and grown and grown. So uh, at the beginning, it was like a, a, a side piece just to kind of fill the gap for a, a, a handful of clients, and then that team grew and that team grew and that team grew, and then um, it became its own division uh, within Kirkhoff Technologies, which um, is a Windows MSP, uh, and then graduated into its own entity. So now it's its own its own company with it, which its own employees and all that kind of stuff. Uh, and it's solely based on open source, um, Linux based infrastructure. So, and we support infrastructure only. We don't do a whole lot of workstations or anything along those lines. We strictly focus on, um, managing the IT infrastructure, the open source infrastructure that, that our clients have. Yeah. Uh, team size, you know, uh, it right now we're at, um, 10 engineers total, uh, I think, no, sorry, 12, there's 12. <laughs> we're increasing too fast. Um, I, we I, 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 I've given up keeping track. So no, no, we're at 12. So, um, yeah. And so that's just the engineering team. That's, you know, and then we've got sales and admin and finance and HR on top of that. So there's a number of people that, that in supporting roles, but the engineering team itself is, um, is 12 strong and, uh, yeah. We're, we're expected to grow our team by another um, 50% this year too. So we're growing. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, this has been a great ride. So definitely enjoying that. Uh, so yeah, you made a comment a couple months ago. So I'm like, hey, here's some resources around time management. You'll help your team. And you're like, actually, we're in a pretty good spot already um, with the changes you've made. So I'm like, hey, let's let's get on the podcast and unpack that a little bit. Um, so what's been your experience at coming up through the ranks as an engineer with time entry and, or even maybe previous careers? Um, <laughs> I'll, I'm going to, this is, this will be the first time you've ever heard it from Chris. I hate doing time entries. <laughs> Me too. So, Me too. So I, it's dear to my heart. Uh, this stress, uh, that, that is, uh, that's, that truly exists. And I don't know that there's a way to completely be rid yourself of it. Uh, but there, we have certainly come up with mechanisms to make it manageable. And that's kind of the best you can kind of do. Um, and so the first, the first thing that that was really, um, important to us was to identify the sources. So what are the sources of this stress surrounding time entries and, and managing recording your time? as it relates to client work or internal work or uh, work outside of. And everybody is different. We had uh, a number of people that were doing it a certain way. They were doing it different ways based on how their minds work and how their workflow worked and how they mentally did their capacity uh, or <laughs> did, did this job. Um, and so we had to find something, some things that were universally applicable to all of those methods. I didn't want to change the methods because 
that's that's what people were comfortable with. That's how they that's how they managed this this thing um, that ever that nobody particularly likes doing, but is a ne necessary evil for this industry. Where our the money is our the time is our money. The money is our time. It's the yeah. it's the nature of the beast. So um, yeah, our first thing was to identify well what are the sources, and one of the biggest sources of problems or stress in time in entering timesheets is context switching. So uh, being involved in one thing and then being called into something else and called into something else, whether and, and we and the sources of that context switching was Slack. So we have Slack, we have emails, we have a phone system, um, we also have teams. So you know, there's a lot of different sources of inputs, we have alert systems. So we've got the, the monitoring systems that are alerting all the time and they're sending things into the Slack channels. And so there's a lot of input. So one of the first things that we did was actually quite simple. Um, I was, it, was, uh, it was an invitation to do it at first uh, and then it became a mandatory thing. It was mandated uh, and that, and what we, what we, we call them focus blocks. I mean, it's as simple as that. Yeah. So the the way that we institute it is you have to pick at least a two hour block every single day. We started small, two hour block every single day. And you are going to set yourself in focus mode on Slack and you're going to close it. You're going to turn off the notifications. You're going to turn off your email. You're going to turn off your teams, no inputs whatsoever and solely focus on one thing. And you need to plan for what that's going to be every single day. Um, for some, that took a little bit of getting used to. Uh, it took a little bit of coaching because so don't. It's not like you can just flick a switch and people will change how they operate. Mm -hmm. That little notification bar down there. Those. I mean, we're in a society right now where we're we're inundated with uh, the social media interruptions and all those kind of notifications. And so, you know, yeah, it's embedded. It's embedded in our daily daily lives. So pulling people away from that in and of itself was challenging, but I think we've, we have succeeded. Uh, and, and where I really draw success from is not with the people that were half decently doing okay with timesheet entry anyway, it's the people that we knew that I saw that were struggling with it every single week, every mm -hmm. single month, they would yeah. be, they would be delayed in their timesheet entries or they wouldn't have it in on time or what have you. Those are the people that I believe that I noticed really benefited from uh, using pure time blocks. We went and said, so at first it started with two hours a day. And then we said, if you want, you can institute two of them. Now, the, the question is, well, what if we need to get a hold of you? I, I, it was a simple answer. I'll phone you. I will use the old fashioned phone system and call you if something comes up that's in such a that is in such a dire situation that we need to actually interrupt your focus block. But the respect of the focus block is absolute. There is no you don't break that rule. It is a focus time. It gives and and just that little re respite from all the inputs. Um, employee satisfaction went up. Uh, productivity went up. We got more out of our employees. They're, they're way more productive using this system than before. Less, less scattered. Um, been a real, it's been a real bump for the company as a whole. Um, so that's the first thing that we did. Um, the second thing that we did was same deal, context switching. And we, unlike some MSPs, we have our clients, uh, most of our clients are in our Slack list and they can constantly be asking questions and, and they'll reach out. Some of them go direct. We, we discourage our clients going direct to engineers. And so, um, and most of them have been very compliant to go into the shared channels to make sure that their request gets listened to by their, um, their team. So we did two things with, with Slack and, the, and with that communication. So the first thing was um, we assigned pods. So we have two different teams. I, rec I talked about that in the capacity planning side. So one of the other advantages of, of doing the pods is that 
we took the client list and we split it into the number of pods we had. And right now that's two. And so each client is assigned to a pod. Those members are in those channels. The other pod members are not in those channels. They do not need to be listed or they, they're in there, but they're muted. So that's the first thing, separate, lower the number of inputs, discourage uh, the watching of all the things. So that goes for the monitoring channels, that goes for the, the communication channels with people. So that was the first thing. Um, the other thing that we did was institute a, a 15 minute minimum time entry. And the reason we did that is the granularity in the past, what we were doing is, is it was, um, it was based on, they would, they would get into the, the 10 minutes, five minutes, like trying to record five minute time entries or 10 minute time entries, um, was stressful because you're trying to write a note that it took you almost as long to write the time entry as it is to do the, do the thing. Yeah. Um, so not terribly productive and that granularity wasn't valuable to our clients either. So mandatory 15 minute time entry that was across the board. So if you're doing client work, if you're doing any work, you're going to break an hour into four different pieces, max. And that, that was like shoulders going, oh, thank goodness. Cause it's much easier to say, okay, every 15 minutes you, you have a potential switch in what you're going to talk, what you're, what you've done. Some of the pushback was on, well, what about if I'm working on three different clients in that 15 minute period over the course of time, you, you average, it averages out. Yeah, it really does. And you, you know, and our, our clients are, are perfectly happy with the response times they're getting. And this has allowed for us to be more, uh, more responsive at the end of the day. So they're happier because of the way that we've done this. So, um, yeah, I'd say that's the three big things. Uh, you know, we focus blocks, we split into two different pods and then assign clients to those pods specifically for both the chat channels and the, uh, the MRR, or the, uh, the MMA stack. Uh, and then, um, the third thing was the 15 minute time entries. Yep. And then, uh, has the crafty bot helped as well? We oh yeah. Questions. So yeah, we, one of our, uh, our C, our CTO, uh, Richard, uh, designed crafty bot quite a while ago. That is a bot that sits in all of the craft, all of the channels on Slack and we make time entries straight. We can make time entries. We can make tickets. We can make it. it, it we have everything set up so that it's listening on those channels. And then whenever we want to make a ticket, we can just do so straight from, uh, we just make a time entry right into the Slack channel. The clients see the, see the entry. They, you know, it's just, a, there's a, a special character and then, you know, ticket new or time entry new or whatever you want, whatever, uh, command you want to put in there as, as Linux based command line people, it's, uh, that's, that was very conducive to how we operate with these computer systems anyway. So it was an yeah. easy fit. Uh, and everybody uses it. It's used by, I, I use it too. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's awesome. I think he started that like probably six, seven years ago, right? It's not a recent thing. No, no. The initial, the, the initial, uh, version of it, um, was, has been around. Yeah. At least since 2015, I remember being, being in there in 2015. Yeah. Um, and then we've, we've steadily improved it and added to it and, and, uh, expanded it to include more things. Yeah. Um, so now we can put notes on tickets and we can add time entries and all of those kinds of pieces of the puzzle. Yeah. No, it's, it's been awesome. Uh, cause nowadays there's a thread is the main commercial option for that. I don't think there's anybody else really with a comprehensive chat bot really for Slack and, and, um, teams integrated with the PSAs, but thread is the big one for that the commercial solution. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we were, I was pretty excited to see what they, um, what they had to, had to show that it was quite comprehensive and, and useful. Yeah. I think that a lot of people would benefit from that, from that system. I know we have, we had to build it ourselves way back in the, in the old days. And this one's probably a lot, a lot more, um, robust, but, uh, it's certainly made an advantage. It's certainly an advantage. Yeah. And then, so yeah, so we, we there's an expression of real time, time entry. So what does real time mean to you? What's your expectations around when they should get their time entries in? Oh, 
real time time entries. Once a I week, think once a day, every hour. Okay, so the, the expectation is that our employees have the previous day's time entry done by 9 a.m. the following business day. That's the baseline. That's the you have to have it done by then or else <laughs> you, you might get a message from me or one of the pod leaders or whatever saying, you know, let's let's get that in. But um, it depends on the person. And some people prefer to put it in real time and they're, they're entering it in one of the, we have multiple, their top left does a great job of it. Um, you know, if you're doing, if you're, if you're doing a lot of triage type work, you know, and you're dealing with monitoring tickets and those kinds of things, if you're on triage, cause we have split triage responsibility, we don't have a single person that does it. Um, it rotates throughout the team. So depending on, on what you're doing, that's going to determine whether or not it's going to be easier to put it in real time or kind of do it in blocks. Um, like I was talking about earlier, if it's a focus block, well, that's a focus block. You can put that focus block in whenever you want, so to speak. If you're doing a lot of context switching um, with triage, for example, then you're going to leverage top left and you're going to end up uh, starting and stopping your time based on what you're doing in that, in that triage system. So, it's it's better, in my opinion, to base the expectation for time entry on the type of work that's being performed. For if I think of my if I think of an MSP, which has a lot of inbound uh, requests from their clients for specific tasks, then real time time entry is a little bit easier, I think, because you know you can start you you go to the task, you finish the ticket, you close the ticket. Um, in the Linux world, some of that exists definitely, but it's not necessarily as cut and dry. Um, you know, you're going to be going back and forth quite a bit uh, with the client, perhaps troubleshooting lots mm -hmm. of different. There's a lot of different um, work types and work styles that we end up having to use. Yeah. Yeah. So, so just being pragmatic with it, and it's a mix of approaches depending on the person and the job and the client and such. Exactly. You have to be flexible. Yeah, flexible. Um, yeah, not being unnecessarily OCD or crazy expectations. But yeah, I, I've had people quit on this or just be very unhappy or very maybe guilty about what they're doing or depressed, all, the, all these sorts of emotional, mental health issues, all because of time entry. Mm -hmm. There's the actual act of doing the entry, but then also the estimating. If, if they had a low budget on it, it was just unrealistic. And it's taking them longer than they're like, I'm worthless and I'm slow and I might lose my job. And really it's like, it never had a proper estimate. He wasn't even involved with estimating it. Uh, yeah. And then, there, then you're, um, you'll, the other thing that yeah, long exactly the same vein, you'll have people that are judging themselves against others, right? So you'll have somebody that has, you know, took somebody an hour to do something and then it took them an hour and a half. Well, I'm not, I'm not good enough. I'm not as good as that other person. But there's never no ticket is exactly the same, and so you know, I, I agree, and and I and I see that, and so it is definitely something to watch. I know, I know, based on the um, the stay interviews that we have with our with our people that we that we already see that time entry is a key stressor um, amongst amongst our team, and so that's why we focus so much time and attention to make sure that we try and alleviate that stress as much as, much as possible and make it, uh, make it reasonable. Yeah. Yeah. And then with the, so you just hired two engineers. Is this something you bring up in the interview discussions as well or requirements on time entry? Absolutely. So, you know, setting expectation right off the hop. Um, I'm the last interviewer of the people. There's a few different levels that'll be there. Uh, we'll do a, a culture fit first, and then we'll do a, um, a technological assessment based on some key things that we know. Um, we have quite a good technological assessment that somebody has to pass through. And then if they get past those things, then it, it'll come to me. And it's, I kind of look at it as my job is to give them a little taste of the real world of what it looks like and what it's going to feel like. And time entry is one of the one of the big bullet points that sits there. How do you feel about being able to manage the recording and representation of your time 
in a ticketing system? Have you used a ticketing system? What do you, how do you feel about a ticketing system? Um, you know, cause a lot of people come from private sector. They worked for this one company. They really don't have to track their time. They're just yeah. doing their thing, but that doesn't work for us. We need, it, it's a, it's a mandatory component. Um, so, you know, having that as part of the interview process gives, sets that expectation ahead of time and ensures that you're, um, you're not painting the rosy picture necessarily on that part of the job. Yeah. Yeah. Not no surprise. Yeah. Try to scare them off. Cause it's, we, we hate exactly. to hire somebody after three <laughs> months or six months. They're like, oh, I just can't do it. Right. It's such a waste of time and money. Yeah. Exactly. And then what training do you give them in that first day, first week around time entry? Time so, time. I mean, the first thing is to introduce them to all the ways and you do have to be careful with that because if, what we found was we made the mistake in a couple of instances where we had one person showing one person how they did time entries. Mm. And then what would happen is that new person would try and model how the first person did it. And it didn't fit the way they thought. And I don't, I don't need to go into too much of the detail of that, but it wasn't conducive to them. And so we had to, I had to unpack that in some of the um, employee check-ins that we did because that came up. And I was also pointing out the fact that the timesheets weren't entered on time. And so this was something that we were, we were trying to figure out. And so, you know, going through that review, it was recognized, oh, you're doing it this way. Yeah, because that's the way I was shown how to do it. Well, that was conducive to the to the teacher, but wasn't necessarily conducive to the way that the student thought. And so we had to adjust that and make sure that we, um, we help them develop a system to make it easier for them to be able to, to enter time, whatever that looked like for them. Yeah. So, and sometimes it's, you know, you're recording that time in another tool. Maybe you're recording that time on a piece of paper, right? You're writing it down. I know one of our pod leaders writes down, writes it on a piece of paper every day and that's how he does it. Um, and you know, um, keeps text notes, type text notes elsewhere, and then does all the sheet at the same time. Others it's real time. Got to do it in the, got to do it in the moment because that's when it's fresh in my head and I can, and they type a thousand words a minute, right. And, and they can get it out. out. So yeah, that's uh, different strokes for different folks. Different strokes for different strokes. So yeah, you know, having different tools and introducing the different ways. So having multiple ways to accomplish the goal. And what, what we found is that the, the person will adapt to the one that they feel most comfortable with. They'll try it. Maybe it works. Maybe it doesn't work. But don't be prescriptive. I think that's probably the key part is don't be prescriptive. Um, if you want people to be l less stressed around this subject, don't be prescriptive because it, it is very much related to how somebody thinks. Yeah. Yeah. And then they want to see the top left way, which is one of the, one of the ways, um, mm -hmm. there is a video on our YouTube channel. So subscribe to YouTube there. And uh, there's a video like time entry for crazy busy engineers. So if you're managing a lot of work and jumping between different things, um, how do you manage that flow, your focus blocks, the context switching, try to get to one thing at a time, but, it's still going to happen that you're helping a handful of clients at the same time. And how do you do your time entry? So there's a live demo of that and some teaching there. So, but this has been great, Chris, to see what you've done with your pod leaders and the teams there one-on-one -on -one and, and just reducing the stress. It's still, still there. It's a part of the job, but we can make it as good as possible and, and be pragmatic with that and making sure we get accurate data into ConnectWise or Autotask and into QuickBooks and wherever we need it. Uh, we actually have dashboards that we can trust in numbers like yeah. every day. Yeah. They might be behind four hours since over the night or whatever. Right. But it's really 99.9% .9 accurate on those metrics, agreement, profitability, and how are we through the months? So we can predict with precision, precision, what we're, where we're going to be at the 20 days down the road. Absolutely. Yeah. The data is, is very well defined uh, and easy to follow. You can't do that if people are waiting till the, the, the two weeks or until mm -hmm. the time sheet deadline to get it in and then 
Yeah, and also it's so our month end is going so smooth now. Like we can get those invoices out, the T and M invoices, block time invoices out, like showing the work what we've done um, within a couple of days. And yeah, we got it down to two business days. Yeah, good. All right, thank you very much for this. It's been a delight, and um, we'll see you sometime in the future on another episode, maybe, Chris. Sounds good. Thanks for having me. All right. Thank you. Bye.